Howdy, you guys. I am working on the gussets for the, what are these? These are the gussets for the very front of the lower longerons on the fuselage. I forget the numbers, the, the part number for these, but all I'm doing right now is just a, is a generic general layout as per the plans. So I have this top line marked here. This dimension is given as, um, I believe it's five and an eighth. So I've measured from this corner, five and an eighth, marked my line. The line is perpendicular to this edge. And then I marked this line here. And again, this is given on the plans. This is nine sixteenths from this bottom edge. So I measured that and um, this line at nine sixteenths runs parallel to the bottom. And then when you look at the plans, they tell you that you need five eighth inch holes down this side. So all that I do for my initial setup is I, I start with edge distance. So this is going to be cut off. So this line here represents the edge of the part. From that line to this first tick mark is a quarter inch because these holes are going to be eighth inch on, in diameter. But I've added a sixteenth just to give me a little bit of a buffer here. So from this line to this hash mark is, um, what is that, five sixteenths. And then when you look at the prints, they say that the spacing between each hole is 27 30 seconds. So from this hole, I measure 27 30 seconds, make a mark, measure another 27 30 seconds, make a mark, and so on till I get my five holes. Then from this hole, I do the same thing. I make sure I have my edge distance. So I've marked from this mark, I measured down five sixteenths, right? Cause these are eighth inch holes. So you need at least a quarter. I add another sixteenth to that. And I draw, I drew this line, which I didn't, the ink smeared a little bit. So, after I had this bottom line drawn, then I was able to go ahead and mark out where I need to remove material. So according to the plans, this bottom leg right here is 3 16 wide. So I did 3 16 drew my line. And then this line here is shown in the plans. This is a half inch from this edge which is drawn parallel. And when you're done with these lines, you can clearly see where you need to remove material. So I hope that makes sense. The biggest thing to pay attention to is this is 9 16 wide. This is half inch wide. This distance here for this line is 5 and an eighth. You measure your, you get your edge distance, and if you want a little bit of a buffer for your first hole, and then you mark the 2764 or 2730 seconds until you get five of them, and then mark a line. Make sure you have your edge distance, mark that line. Come over 3 16 from this edge and do that line, which is parallel to this edge and then block out the rest. And this is what you need to remove. And then of course you need to remove this top part. That's just a basic layout to get the general shape. I don't mark any of the, I don't punch or drill any holes until I start working this piece physically on the fuselage. I let the fuselage dictate to me where these holes are ultimately gonna be. Because this line and this line, these are not etched in stone. I like to fit these to the fuselage and let the fuselage tell me where these ends, where these edges are going to be and where the holes are going to go. And I'll work through that as I get to it. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon. Okay, so I've got this part roughly made. I've got my cutout there. And I've got the tip cut off here. And this is just in the rough. I just cut it out and I deburred a little bit on these edges here because these two flanges, this one and this one, are now going to have to be bent. So I did clean this up a little bit. 
Uh, but the rest of the part has not been dealt with yet because I want to leave as much material on it as I can so I can get these holes put in it and hopefully maintain some decent edge distance. So at this point now, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to switch hands. Maybe not. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start fitting this to the fuselage. So the, this plate goes over top from the inside of the fuselage. This plate goes over top of the powder coated engine bracket, if you want to call it that. And underneath this piece of angle here. So it has to go over top of the white powder coat and behind the aluminum like that. Now what happens is the reason you have to bend it is because this powder coated part and this aluminum are, are on two different planes and the the thickness of this aluminum is such that it doesn't take up that gap. So you have to bend it in two dimensions. So this is going to be hard to do but when I lay it in here like this Okay, this top edge here has to fit flat against the white powder coat. Now when I do that, this edge down here sits back away from the aluminum. It needs to be up against the aluminum and it needs to sit flat across the white powder coat. So at this point when I put it in here and hold it against the powder coat it does not lay flat along the back side of this aluminum so I have to bend it and I bend it along the line that I had drawn. So I'm going to stick this in the vise. I'm going to get a couple of pieces of wood. Let me see if I can show you that. So I'll stick this in the vise here, since I don't have a break. Um, I'm not going to work anytime soon because of the Christmas holidays, so I can't use a break. I have to do this at home. So I'm going to put this in my vise, like this. And then I'm going to clamp these two pieces of wood on either side of this. And then I'll use these C-clamps to hold the assembly together and then I can also use the seat clamps as leverage and make the bend. So let me do that and I'm just going to keep working this edge, this edge here and this edge here. I'm going to keep bending those two so when that, when this plate is installed, when the plate is installed, it will lay flat in two dimensions along here and along the back side of this aluminum. All right, so that's the idea. Let me see if I can get there. Well, while I'm here, I'll show you the one that I've already done. So this one is already complete. And what I'm talking about is this flange here with the holes in it, that lays flat against here and then this flange that is hidden on the back side of the aluminum angle it sits flat against the aluminum angle so you want to keep bending this and this until you get those two to uh, to rest flat where they need to be all right so that's what I'm working on now with the other piece Now I have the skin unclecoed all the way back to the spar. And I have this wood pole here wedged in it to help hold it back from the firewall. Now against the plans, I went ahead and drilled my holes through the longer on, the bracket, this auxiliary longer on. The plans tell you not to until you have these pieces made, but I went ahead and used the skin as a template and drilled my holes. And now that actually is an advantage at this point because I could sight through these holes to see how my edge, dis the edge distance on this piece is going to turn out. 
So I've got this bent. I don't know if that shows up on camera. It's, it's very, the bends are very, very slight. It doesn't take much to get this to fit in here correctly. Um, so now that I have this bent, I went ahead and I measured this mark here, that little tick mark. So I measured from this edge, minimum edge distance. So I measured from this edge over and I put that line and then I measured from this top edge down and put that little tick mark. So an eighth inch hole at that location will get me a minimum, minimum edge distance from this edge and this top edge. So using that as a reference, I could now fit my piece in here, right? It goes on the back side of the white powder coat and it goes in front of this aluminum angle here. like this, okay? So this edge here, this edge of the gusset is supposed to be an eighth of an inch away from the firewall. That's what the instructions say. But what I wanna do now is I wanna sight through this first hole of the white powder coat and try to find that hash mark cross that I had made. Again, don't know that this will show up, but that mark is in the hole right there. So now all I have to do is finagle this gusset around and see if I can get all of these different things to play nice. Now, if I look at through that hole and I have my mark made, the uh, cross that I had made with those lines for the minimum edge distance on the gusset, that's in that first hole. And the gusset is hitting something in the back here. I can't see what because it's on the other side. But if you look at the gusset, see how it's at an angle in comparison to the firewall? So I know something has to be trimmed, and I'm guessing it's going to be this top corner here. That bottom edge of the cutout is hitting the metal, the white powder coated part, which is not allowing the gusset to move back toward the firewall. So this edge, let me see. I'm not going to even be able to get my finger in view. Anyway, I have to tweak this corner here where that, that notch is cut out. I have to lower that notch down toward the aluminum angle and um, try to get this to fit better. So that's that's what I'm going to do now. But when I when I'm finished, I want to make sure that this this mark here lines up in that hole here correctly that will maintain my minimum edge distance on that corner and then um, I can I can shift this around pivot it if you will on that hole shift it around get it to where I think it's close and then come through with a marker through these holes here on the white powder coated part onto this gusset and mark the holes and then take this out and measure those locations, make sure the edge distance is good. And then I'll do the same on this leg here. Once I get these holes decent, I'll go through and I'll try to figure out if these holes here on this edge are just as good. And, and I'll get you there. Let me, let, let me get these holes across the top figured out and get this notch here cut out a little bit better so this gusset will fit nice and uh, I'll be back. All right, here is that bracket and you can see, hopefully, you can see here is my line which represents minimum edge distance. That little tick mark there in this vertical line here, that's minimum edge distance. 
when you can see where the actual hole is, it's actually slightly better. It's centered on this line, so the edge distance, the edge distance from this edge to the hole is good. It's actually below the tick mark, so the edge distance from this edge down to the hole is actually better than minimum. And once I had this in place and I had it aligned correctly, I went ahead and marked the other holes just to see where they come out. And you can see I've got more than plenty of edge distance here. And from this hole to this back edge, plenty of edge distance on these other holes. So I'm very pleased with that. So what I'm going to do, since I was holding this by hand, I'm not entirely comfortable drilling all these holes just yet because it could have moved. So I'm basically just going to do this hole first and that it will then pivot off of that hole when I Clico it. And then I can pivot around into place where I want it and then put a C clamp on this edge to really hold it in place. Before I do that, I'll use some alcohol to remove these hole, these marks here. I'll drill this hole. I'll Clico this in place. I'll pivot it around that Clico till I get it aligned the way that I want it. Then I'll clamp this end to hold it, to keep it from pivoting. And then I'll go ahead and I'll mark all these holes like I usually do using a drill bit. Once I get these drilled, then I'll come back and I'll Clico all of these into place and I'll erase all of these marks. Once I get this Clico in place on the fuselage using these holes, I'll mark a line down the piece of the aluminum angle. And then that line will show me exactly how much material I have to deal with between the edge of the aluminum and the edge of this piece. And then I can go ahead and lay these holes out, which will give me good as edge distance on this and on the aluminum. So let me get these holes done, and then I'll come back and I'll explain more about this edge. All right, so back on the airplane, I had drilled that one hole on the gusset, like I had just talked about, and I got that clecoed. I'm using this piece as well, even though I could swing this out of the way and just Clico directly to the white powder coated bracket. I always try to use as much material and as many Clicos and things as I can to hold things in place. The thickness of this is an eighth. The thickness of this metal bracket is like a sixteenth. So the two of those thicknesses combined will give me a nice drill jig, if you will, to come through here and make my marks onto the gusset. So that's why I've elected to go ahead and Clico through this piece as well. One thing you want to keep in mind, this is going to sag, this firewall. And again, I really apologize for the camera work. I'm trying to do everything myself with one hand. But the firewall will sag. And that will affect some of your alignments in the corners. So just be aware of that. And uh, try to keep as many Clicos in place as you can as you work. And um, try to keep the sag off of this firewall as best you can. Anywho, hole is drilled in the gusset. The gusset is now Clicoed through that hole back onto the fuselage. Now, I can align this eighth inch gap between the bracket and the firewall. Now, it does not have to be exact. You just need some clearance in here. On my bracket on the other side, I've got more than an eighth. And this one looks like it's going to be about an eighth right on. So now I'm just going to swing this over until I get a nice parallel gap through here. And that looks pretty close. And you can see how close I got the bend on this bracket because it's tight. This edge, this end of the aluminum gusset fits nice and snug against the aluminum angle this piece and you can see here it's very close there's very little movement to push this up against the aluminum and on the other side this gusset is fits nice and flush up against the back side of this 
powder coat. So I got those angles in the gusset bent very close. So with a couple of rivets, this will all go together very nicely. So now I have my gap set here. Of course, this is still held in place here with a Clico. Now all I have to do is come in with my drill bit and go through these existing holes and make my marks on the bracket for these. Then I can pull this off and look at it, make sure that the edge distance is fine. I already know that it is because I had off camera, I had put this in place. I came through here with a marker, took it off and looked at it. Edge distance is great. So now I've got it back together. I'm gonna go through here, make my marks. Then I'll drill these holes, I'll come back Put this back in place with all of these Clicos, which is now going to lock the gusset in place. And then on the back side, I'll come in here and I'll draw a line with a marker across the top of the angle here and down the length of the angle here onto the gusset. And then I'll take the gusset off and I'll locate the holes for this leg using the marker edge to reference the edge of the aluminum and then of course the edge of the gusset. And I'll get to that. Let me drill some holes and I'll get back to you. Oh, so you can see here, you can see how the gusset lays against the aluminum here in this corner here. Just, it's very close. Nothing that a, a couple of rivets can't draw in. I mean, it's minimal. And then you can see across the top here it's nice and tight against the, the metal bracket. So those bends are very, very close, and I'm happy with that. You can see this dog ear here is not rubbing up against the, the uh, powder-coated bracket. This, this, this leg, this little ear here is not interfering with the bracket. And you can see I've got some space between the gusset and the white powder-coated bracket in this corner here. So there's no interference. Everything is fitting really well. There's the Clico here. You can see the edge distance is really good. And like I said, this edge here is at least an eighth from the firewall and it runs nice and parallel now. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark these. All right, again, apologize for the camera work. I'm trying to get you guys some good quality information, so I'm taking this in baby steps, hopefully explaining it so you can understand it. And I'm by myself out here in the shop, so I gotta do all the camera work with one hand. All right, that's enough whining for now. Let me get going. All right, guys, we're getting close now. Bear with me. So here's the gusset back on the workbench before I um, after I had after I match drilled these holes I had this click in place on the fuselage and before I removed it I traced the aluminum angle piece which you see here so this represents where the aluminum angle sits on the gusset from here I drew this line here this represents the center line for the hole now, since this outer line represents the aluminum angle, I need to maintain edge distance from this line. So I did um, minimum edge distance, and I believe like a 30 second. I added just a little bit, and I marked this line. You can see that the line is not centered from this edge and this line. It's offset a little bit toward this line, which again represents the edge of the angle. That's what you want. You want this line offset a little bit because when you look at how it is once it's completely in place, this is the angle that I, or the gusset I had worked on earlier. You can see where these holes are in relation to the angle. They're close they're closer to this edge of the angle than they are to this back side here. And that's what you want because you need room to get your Clicos in here and you need room especially up in this area so you can drive these rivets. If these holes were more centered they would be closer to this powder coated part 
and I don't know that you'd be able to get in here and squeeze these or buck these. So if the holes are closest, as close as you can get them to the edge here of the aluminum, but maintain minimum edge distance, that's what you want. So again, coming back over here to my piece that I'm working on now. Again, these lines here represent the actual aluminum angle. And I measure from this edge of the angle over minimum edge distance. That's what this line represents. And then measuring from this edge, because this is the edge of my gusset, I wanted to maintain minimum edge distance going down this way. So measuring from here, minimum edge distance plus like a 64th gets me that tick mark. And then going from the plans, it's 27, what is it, 27, 30 seconds? Where are you? Uh, right here, yes, it says 27, 30 seconds, typical spacing between them. So minimum edge distance here, 27, 32. 2732, 2732, 2732, because you need five of them. And then if you measure from that last tick mark to this line, which is the, the edge of the aluminum angle, that needs to be minimum edge distance as well. And in my case, it's right on. So now I can go ahead and drill these just like they are on to final size or almost final size. I do like one size under. And then once I get these drilled, I'll Clico this gusset using these holes here back onto the fuselage. And then I'll mark through these holes onto this piece of aluminum. Take the gusset back off, drill through the aluminum, put everything back together one final time, and then match drill final size everything. So that's next. All right. I'm hoping this makes sense. Of course, I'm doing this in chunks, so hopefully when I edit it in my video editor and get it posted to YouTube, it will flow a little nicer and it will make sense for you. All right, I'll be back. Okay, I'll be there in a second. Okay, so once again, back at the fuselage, you can see I've got the gusset clicoed in place here. I've got the holes drilled in the gusset down this leg from the marks that I had just talked about. Now all I need to do is come in here and use the gusset as a template to mark these hole locations into this aluminum bracket. Now, like I said, I use a smaller drill bit. So instead of using a number 30 drill bit for these holes, I use a number, what would that be? A 31, a number 31 drill. So it's slightly undersized. So I'll go ahead and I'll spin that bit through these holes to make a mark on the aluminum angle like I always do. Take the gusset off and then I'll drill the actual holes into the aluminum using a number 31 bit. And then I'll come back. I'll re the gusset into place just like you see it here. And then I'll match drill these holes to the final size number 30. Once I get that done, I'll take these Clecos out. I'll put the skin back and I'll Cleco the skin to the substructure and to the firewall. And then I'll come back and I'll drill through these holes that represent these holes through the skin, through this angle, through the metal bracket, and through the gusset to match drill everything to final size. And that's it. That's, uh, that's how I do these gussets. Let me get this in and uh, we'll move on from there. This of course is the finished product. You can see I've got the skin clicoed on to the substructure. I've got a Clico to the firewall. I came in and match drilled these holes here, which are the top holes here. 
on the gusset. Everything else has been match drilled and everything is clecoed in place. So that's the finished product. That's what I'll be doing with this gusset here. Just finalizing these holes, putting everything back together, final drill and everything. That's done. And then it's on to whatever's next. All right, I hope that uh, I hope that helps. Sorry for the uh, for the uh, long-winded explanation, but like I said, I'm trying to get some uh, some quality information to, out to you guys to help with some of these things that might be a little bit more difficult to do. All right, talk to you soon. Wow, talk to you soon.